Hello and welcome to the crayon tutorial. The other day I had a woman on a forum ask me if I knew how to transfer a crayon colored or colored pencil picture to wood. Um, I guess she had a, a child's uh, picture that was uh, colored by crayons in a crayon coloring book and uh, she wanted to save it on a piece of wood and at first I kind of laughed and thought you can't do it because the crayon is not going to transfer to the wood uh, like ink would and so I kind of wrote it off and then I was thinking about it and she was really upset over the whole thing trying to figure it out evidently she'd uh, made several attempts to to make it work and nothing worked and so I thought There's got to be a way so I thought Obviously, it's simple you take a picture or scan the picture with a scanner and Print it on a piece of paper and then transfer it like you would normally do an image transfer so that's what I told her and uh, she was super excited to try it. Um, she hasn't tried it that I know of yet. In fact, it just actually happened uh, tonight. She uh, asked me about it. So this is a quick tutorial that I wanted to do up for her. And then uh, I thought I would share it with everyone else too because I'm sure she's not the only person that wants to save some kind of uh, artwork that was either done with a, you know, chalk or or a colored pencil or crayon and this will be perfect for that so first off what you want to do is take a picture of that image or scan it with a scanner print it off on a piece of regular paper like this um, and then now if, if you've got a laser printer that's great you just print it and you're ready for the next step however if you've got a bubble jet or an inkjet printer you're going to have to spray that image with some kind of Krylon or some kind of a matte finish clear coat um, to lock the ink in. Otherwise, it will bleed and it will not work. Uh, I've been told you can use hairspray. I had one lady tell me she uses Aquanet hairspray. She puts three coats on, waits a half hour in between coats, and then it works spectacularly. I've never tried it, honestly. Uh, I just made the jump to a laser printer. Um, I do, I don't know, 15, 20 pieces a day usually. Uh, I think I'm up to almost 2,000 pieces I've done in the last two years. Um, primarily I do it for a, a craft mall booth that I have. I create signs. So, again, if you've got a bubble jet or an inkjet printer, you'll have to spray that image down. And uh, if you get a laser printer, you can move to the next step. Or you could even go to like FedEx or somewhere else and have it copied um, onto regular paper with a uh, laser toner ink and that would transfer um, awesomely. Um, if you have writing on it, like if it says Happy Thanksgiving, you'll have to ask them to flip that because when, when the image is transposed over and then um, it'll be upside down or it'll be backwards and you won't be able to read the writing. So if you do that, make sure they flip the image or if you do it yourself, make sure you flip the image. Now recently, um, I've been using a program, uh, it's called Image Size. Break this down. It's called Image Size. It's that little blue logo and um, it works really well to modify your photos um it's got lots of neat features that's the actual logo for the app um that's done with that's on my iphone or ipad it's a free it's a free program i also use this program vanilla pen when i want to create um signs and whatnot it's uh, a, again it's another free program it's really nice to have in your arsenal of tools um, because I don't know about an Android phone, but I use it in my iPad and iPhone. Now, once you open the image size program, you can select your size right here, width and height. Let's lock those two together. Now, right now it's set up to print 
eight inches by just under eight inches and that'd be fine for for you know printing at home or for you know for your artwork in this case we're going to print a little bit smaller we're going to change the size to three inches done so now it's three inches by almost three inches high and then now uh, we could print that off now let's say for instance you wanted to change it you, you don't want it to stay the same or this this dimension locked in you can change your height to uh, let's say 2.5 inches done it's gonna cut in a little bit on your picture but you can grab it and move it around to keep your image like let's say you've got a block of wood that's three inches wide by only two and a half inches tall and you want to print it that that would make you or allow you to print it otherwise this takes it back to the original dimensions or approximate dimensions and locks it in so if you change the width it's going to automatically change the height it's a really nice program and it's again it's it's a free app uh, also in here you can flip the image like if you've got happy thanksgiving written across there you go up there and hit the edit button and uh right down here there's a flip uh flip button you press that and over here you can flip it this way or that way or you can flip it this way so if you had writing you'd want to flip it that way so it would be reversed when you when you print the image and once you're done editing it or flipping it if you need to flip it you press ok and then you press done and you're back to the main page again and down here in this lower corner is the print button you press the print button and there's your image kind of gives you an idea on how big the paper is going to be with your image and I tend to print on uh, legal paper just so I can get the most out of my area um, paper is a little more expensive but um, for me I do a lot of bigger bigger prints and you're limited to eight and a half by 14 so you might as well make the most of it that's what I always say um, and it's just regular paper it's you know it's nothing special and you go to up here and hit print and uh and it would print the image of course i'm low on ink <laughs> but uh, i've already printed off a bunch of these already and uh kind of gotten things ready for our next step which would be taking uh getting all your supplies ready and in this case this is what you're going to need you're going to need um you're going to need some matte finish mod podge you're going to need a foam brush for the Mod Podge. You're also going to need a foam brush for your chalk paint if you decide to use chalk paint. And I'll show you why you'd want to use that. And I prefer uh, this brand um, personally. I, it dries fast, it covers well, and it just works really well with the uh, Hewlett Packard ink that I have with this printer. Now I've got these three um, different examples for you this one is printed out already three by three we're going to print it just on regular wood with no chalk paint down first this one i've pre-painted it with chalk paint just a light brush coating so you can see kind of see through the, the wood a little bit but it'll really make the colors pop and then on this one um I painted only half of the wood with chalk paint so you could look at it and see it side by side and, and kind of get an idea what you prefer and again depending on the piece it's it's going to be different um, and different on your personal preference um, let me see okay let's get the Mod Podge out okay So let's start with this one first. Take the Mod Podge. I transfer my Mod Podge to a, a glass jar and um, drill a hole in the lid and shove a foam brush in it. And that way, when I'm done with it, I just screw on the cap and I'm good to go. And I don't have to rinse the brush out every time I use it. Um, it saves a lot of product that way. So now what we do is we put a little bit of Mod Podge on the wood cover it so that it's nice and glossy or shiny nice coat 
you don't want it glopped on there but you want a nice even coat and then you do the same thing on your print just nice even coat take it lay it on top there I oversized the wood just a little bit just so that you could kind of see around it so that looking at a glance you could see okay this has got the chalk paint over there and that doesn't and same with these so you can see it better and uh, just kind of squeegee it and uh, there's the air pockets now normally I would say set this aside for 24 hours to cure and to set now we're just using the normal Mod Podge you can use something called Mod Podge photo transfer medium uh, it comes in white or clear I believe I to be honest with you, I, this is eleven and a half dollars for this tiny little bottle. I can get a, a sixty-four ounce jug of the regular Mod Podge for twelve bucks on sale um, with a coupon. So I far prefer the regular Mod Podge over the photo transfer. I just have had better luck with it. I do all my pieces with the regular Mod Podge. I don't use that that photo transfer stuff at all. So, um, anyways, if you want to speed this process up, get a, a regular household uh, clothes iron, take a sheet of paper, lay it on top of your piece, take your iron, and apply heat, not steam, but just heat, a little bit like put it on medium, and uh, just to get it nice and warm, and what this will do is it will activate the ink, um, it's kind of a powder or a dry ink and it it reactivates the ink and it flows and it just it sets it much quicker so you can peel these within an hour um, of, of doing it with when you apply heat um, it just it depends if you're in a hurry if you're not in a hurry then then that's fine just let it sit off to the side for for 24 hours now this one will apply to the to the block of wood that's got chalk paint. First I'll put it on the chalk paint on the side of the wood. Nice even coat. And then we'll put a little bit on the paper, ink side up, obviously. And try not to try not to get it on the back of the paper if you if you can help it. Um, it just makes it easier to peel if you don't have the back all glopped up full of, full of Mod Podge. Squeegee out the air pockets. And if you want to apply heat, either a blow dryer or a clothes, a clothes uh, iron to heat that up. Oops. And uh, again, set that off for 24 hours if you want. Let's set this one there right there and now we'll do the the non chalk painted one put a little bit of mod podge on the wood and then we'll put a little bit on the paper so right there a lot of times what I'll do is I'll put an arrow on the paper facing, you know, so that you can see this side is up. Um, depending on the project, sometimes it's important, sometimes it's not. Uh, in this case, it doesn't make a difference whether it's upside down or not. But let's say you've got a, a piece of wood and there's a hanger already on the back of the wood and uh, you need it to go on this this direction or this side up uh, be important not to put the image the other way plus also in this case before it really sets you, there's a lot of time really for you to manipulate that picture before it really sets up once you add heat to it then forget it it's it, it sticks pretty pretty quick once you add heat to it now We'll set these off to the side those are uh, those will cure and these right here 
I literally did these about an hour ago. So these are really fresh. I did apply heat to these and I also applied pressure. I've got a, an old t-shirt press that I use personally and uh, literally once I apply heat and pressure to these you can peel them within 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, once they cool off you can peel them right away. Um, so let's uh, let's start with uh, this one right here. Let's start with the the one that's got half chalk paint, half no chalk paint. Put a couple droplets of water on there. You can kind of see the image starting to come through there. Rub the finger on it a little bit. See the image bleeding through. Paper starting to soak up. Now I gently start rubbing in the front, in the middle, and then working your way out. If you start on the outer edge, you'll lose more image that way. You'll see how the color's popping already on this part that's painted with the white chalk paint already. Just your colors stand out and the rest of this that's over the wood kind of looks washed out or antique-ish. Again, it depends on what you're looking for. If you want it to look antique-ish, then go for it. Print it on the wood. Um, don't use the chalk paint. However, uh, the ink will stick much better to the chalk paint. You'll have much less image loss if you if you do it right to the chalk paint. Sometimes I'll take a paper towel. My favorite thing to use is a natural sponge because they're super soft and they work really well for grabbing that paper. Now I'm almost to the point where I should stop because if I keep going it's going to soften up the Mod Podge that's underneath there and we're going to start getting some heavy image loss. So we'll stop with that one right there. We'll push that off to the side and let that sit and dry for a little bit. But you can see the difference. Now this is going to get cloudy like this one here. It's going to get cloudy as it dries. And then you'll have to go back time and time. See how it got that a little bit wet right there? It started to lighten up or you can see the image again. That just means there's paper still stuck on the wood. And you have to come back. I've, I've had pieces where I've had to come back five or six, eight, nine, ten times to get that image really clean and to get it clear. But if you don't have the chalk paint, you have you tend to have a lot of image loss um, like that. But that chalk paint, it really locks that image in for you. It really helps a lot. Let's do this next one. This one is the whole thing is with chalk paint. Put the drop of water in there, move it around a little bit. <sighs> you might want to get a, like a little spray bottle, a mister, that helps sometimes. So you're not totally saturating it, especially when you go back to rub it the next time. You don't want it to, you don't want it to stay any water on it. Just gently mist it real lightly. See how bright the colors are on this already. You can see the detail in this. You can see the you can almost see the crayon uh, strokes uh, that were left on the image. It just looks so much better with that white chalk paint underneath. Not like that, but you don't. You, if you if you cut the wood the same size as that, the same size as your paper, you, there will be no edge. It'll go right to the very edge, and it'll look literally like you. Like, like a lithograph, like you ran the thing through a, through a printer and it came out the other end with the image printed on it. Just, just like the original, just like the original picture was. I mean, I've had signs where I've, I've taken a picture of a sign like at Goodwill or something, thought it was kind of cute. I'll take a picture of it at Goodwill. I'll come back home. I'll crop the picture. I'll print it. And literally, you, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between the copy and the original. It comes out that that clear and that clean. I mean, see the detail 
in there in the body of the colors. I mean, the, the you can almost see the crayon strokes. So that's with chalk paint. Now we'll do this one without chalk paint. Dab water. Just rub it, start in the middle, work your way out. If you come in this way, you're going to have a lot of image loss. Also, if you want, yeah, you could use a sponge right from the beginning if you wanted. It, it, sometimes it, it's almost too aggressive see how fast it's peeling with the sponge. I prefer, I highly prefer using my fingers. Some people say, oh, I use an eraser or some kind of a white, non-rubbing, non-abrasive non eraser, but I've tried it. It takes forever, um, and I just don't like the way they turn out with the eraser. With the eraser. Okay, so it kind of gives you an idea of what the three look like. This is with chalk paint. This is no chalk paint. And this is half and half. So again, it depends on what you're looking at for for a you know finished product, what your tastes are, what your objective is. This looks more antique-y. This looks more you now farmhouse-ish, I guess you might say, or a little, little cleaner, more detailed. And you just have to keep coming back every 15 20 minutes or so to, to give it another rub down to remove the paper and eventually you'll rub it with with your hand and as you rub it you'll start to feel a little bit of abrasion um, it's like little teeny tiny pieces of the paper that's coming loose and you'll feel it it's kind of hard to explain but it's really teeny tiny pieces of paper that are still you know stuck in there and eventually the, this cloudiness will go away even once it's dried and um, it'll look just like your original image in this case it'll look identical it'll look identical to your original image I mean except for the you know the, the cloudiness maybe of the white chalk paint but um, it just looks so much better with with the with the chalk paint that's right we reversed the image on that one um, or on this one but um, yeah so these could be actually peeled these would have to sit for 24 hours because they weren't heat treated so um, right now it would just be a, a big gloppy mess if you started peeling with that so go get you some uh, some Mod Podge and some wood and um, sign up for that image size uh, app on your phone and uh, go have fun transferring some uh, some artwork onto onto wood or furniture or your walls or, or whatever you want thanks again for your time I appreciate it